and welcome to GD Life at Pals with teacher Alex. The subject is GD Science and the topic is energy flow in ecosystems. Let's have a quick overview. We will talk about uh, energy flow in ecosystems, energy pyramids, conservation of energy and energy loss, food chains and the limitations of trophic levels, and food webs. So a quick introduction. Energy is constantly flowing through ecosystems. In most ecosystems, there are four important feeding levels that determine the direction of energy flow. Energy is moved from one level to another as organisms feed on each other and are consumed. Producers are the organisms, usually plants, that convert some of the sun's energy into stored chemical energy in the form of glucose and carbohydrates, for example. Primary consumers are herbivores. They obtain energy by consuming producers. Secondary consumers are usually carnivores or omnivores that consume other consumers for energy. Decomposers are organisms that obtain energy by breaking down dead organisms or waste products from other organisms. We can see some examples of these different levels. We can see producers down here, trees, a consumer, probably a secondary or tertiary consumer, and decomposers, some mushrooms, fungi that break down a dead log of wood. Two other terms are autotroph and heterotroph organisms. Producers are autotrophic organisms they make their own food, whereas consumers and decomposers are heterotrophic organisms. They rely on taking in organic substances for their energy needs. Again, energy flows through ecosystems, which means the energy enters the ecosystem from outside, from the sun's energy, and will flow through and eventually leave the ecosystem again, usually in the form of heat. How exactly that works, we will discover in the next few minutes. Energy flow. Models such as the following energy pyramid allow us to visualize the feeding relationship between organisms at different trophic levels. They show the energy gained and lost over time. Producers from the base of the pyramid, um, we can see have in this case 10,000 joules of energy, which they gain from the sunlight, which has a lot more energy. So not all the energy is actually used here. And then energy is taken in by the next level, by the primary consumers who feed on the producers. And we can see as well that the energy from level to level decreases. Conservation of energy, only a small percentage of a feeding level's energy is passed up to the next level as we just saw. For example, let's take a look at the leaf diagram on the right here. In a plant, not all the available solar energy actually makes it into the leaf. The energy that does make it into the leaf is made usable, usable by photosynthesis. That energy may then be used during respiration by the plant or the energy that remains can be lost in several way, one which is heat. Finally, whatever energy is left in the leaf becomes available to the next feeding level when the plant is eaten. So we can see that a lot of energy is already lost at the beginning when the sunlight hits the leaf, some of the light is reflected and some of the wavelengths can't be used by the leaf. Small, per, small percentage of the solar energy will be used in photosynthesis, which produces carbohydrates, chemical energy, glucose, and that glucose um, might then be used by the plant again directly in respiration to cover its own energy needs. And that produces heat as well, so heat will be lost to the surrounding. Only some of the produced carbohydrates will be used by the plant to produce its own biomass to build its body basically that is 
the amount of energy that is now available to the next trophic level. Not all the plants will be eaten, so some plants die, leaves are lost, which will then be used by the decomposers and broken down by the decomposers. One way to represent feeding relationships is with a food chain. This model uses arrows to show the direction in which matter and energy are transferred between organisms. So you can see each organism in the food chain represents a feeding level, a trophic level in the passage of materials and energy. You can see the producer, the plant, which is eaten by an insect, a grasshopper, which in this case is a primary consumer, the first level of consumers, it's a herbivore. The grasshoppers are eaten by mice. The mice are omnivores, which means they might feed on plants as well. Not in this food chain specifically, but in general. They are secondary consumers in this food chain. And we have a hawk, who is the tertiary consumer, and is a carnivore who eats the mouse. Only around 10% of the energy available on a trophic level is passed to the next trophic level. Most of the energy on a trophic level is lost as heat energy produced in respiration and given out to the surrounding by heat transfers. Hence a food chain typically has no more than five, maximum six links because the amount of energy left by the fifth link is only a tiny portion of what was available at the first link. We can see that from one trophic level to the next, the available energy is rapidly decreasing. The reason for that is that on every trophic level, a lot of the energy is used by organisms to just stay alive for metabolism. And in the end, the energy ends up as heat, which is lost to the surrounding and leaves the ecosystem. Most ecosystems are quite complicated and cannot be modeled by a single unbranched food chain because most organisms depend on more than one species for food. The best way to model the feeding relationships in an ecosystem is with elaborate food webs. From a food web we can then pick individual food chains to have a closer look at specific feeding relationships. On the right we can see a food web here and food webs yeah, are more natural, a more natural model than a food chain because they show all possible feeding relationships at each feeding level. Some consumers feed at several different levels the duck in this food web, for example, which we can see here, may eat snails, primary consumers, and big fish, higher level consumers. Omnivores, including humans, eat producers as well as consumers from different levels. Food webs also help identify limitations in communities. Consider what might happen to the frog population if, population if pollution led to the destruction of aquatic plants. The organisms in the next feeding level would lose an important food source. The entire food web would be negatively impacted. Let's have a look at some questions. The arrows indicate the direction of energy flowing in and out of the cow. You can see the cow, energy coming in from feeding, it's consumed, some biomass is built up, transferred into the cow, the cow grows, some of the energy is lost as weight. The arrow between consumed and respiration and heat loss is missing. Mark an arrow on the diagram to indicate the direction of energy flow. You can pause the video if you want to think about the correct answer, otherwise the answer is coming now.
The arrow goes from consumed to respiration and heat loss. Some of the consumed food will be broken down by the cow for its energy needs to keep the cells alive for cellular processes for the metabolism and whenever respiration is done some of the energy is lost as heat to the surrounding. Second question the cow would best fit which of the following roles? Producer, decomposer, primary consumer or secondary consumer? You can pause the video, the answer is coming now. The correct answer is primary consumer. Since cows are herbivores, they feed on producers and after the producers in a food chain comes the primary consumer. Complete the statement with a term from what we've seen in this presentation. The arrow in the food chain shows the direction in which are moving through the food chain. Which two things are moving, flowing through the food chain, cycling through an ecosystem? The answer is coming now. Matter and energy. Matter is transferred from one trophic level to the next and with it energy. The best model of organisms, complex feeding relationships is a food web, food chain, energy link or energy pyramid. The answer is coming now. The correct answer is a food web. Again, food chains just model specific links one line going through a food web which leaves out many important connections and feeding relationships of individual organisms or species or roles in a food web but a food chain can sometimes shed more light on specific interactions between organisms the best model of the complex feeding relationships are food webs. This was GD Life at PALS with teacher Alex, the subject GD Science and the topic Energy Flow in Ecosystems.